All right. Okay. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, so thank you all for coming. So uh, I'm Vyas. Uh, this is Mike. Uh, so we are really happy to uh, host and organize this first workshop on uh, uh, algorithms for software-defined networking. Uh, so what I thought I'd do, we we do is just give you some context for this workshop, the goals for this workshop, to set the tone uh, for this two-day meeting, uh, and then we can take it from there. So to, just to give you an idea of what the context for this workshop is, uh, is uh, I think some of you have heard of, or, or many of you have heard of what's, what's known as software-defined networking. Uh, if you haven't, just wait for like 30 seconds. I'll give you like the 20 second spiel on what software-defined networking is. Uh, so it's a, it's a sort of a technology trend that seems to be really taking off uh, in industry. Uh, so there's a CACM article on how, how Google's using uh, software-defined networking in their wide area networks. Uh, AT&T uh, announced what's called their uh, D2 or Domain 2.0 initiative on moving towards, towards uh, software-defined networking technologies. Uh, and the nice thing about SDN from a networking perspective uh, is that it, ha it has actually been very successful uh, at exposing uh, very rich connections to other uh, disciplines inside computer science. Uh, in, in particular, what we've seen so far is uh, there's been a lot of interest from other communities uh, like distributed systems, programming languages, uh, formal verifications, and so on. Uh, in terms of applying those principles and techniques and solutions uh, in the context of uh, software-defined networking. So, in, so, so, so Mike and I were thinking about this and we sort of thought that uh, a somewhat untapped uh, area where there's a lot of potential is actually uh, algorithms. Uh, so, and algorithms as applied to software-defined uh, networking. And that's really sort of the, the tone for this workshop is uh, what are interesting sort of algorithmic challenges or problems uh, in this domain. So, uh, so for the theory, I mean, so the networking people in this audience probably know what software-defined networking is. Uh, so for the theorists, let me give you my 20-second pitch of what software-defined networking is. Uh, and you'll actually hear these two terms, uh, SDN and NFV, thrown around a little bit. So uh, net networking people like to use three-letter acronyms. So don't get like too sort of, uh, we like to use these buzzwords. So don't get like too annoyed or don't get too sort of stressed when you hear these words like SDN, NFV. I'll give you the 20-second pitch. So what is software-defined networking? Uh, so, so, uh, so the roots of software-defined networking really came about uh, from the fact that networks are actually really painful to manage. And the interfaces to manage these networks uh, are kind of embedded inside these low-level configurations inside uh, Cisco and Juniper routers and whatnot. So in some sense, you have this network operator who actually has a really crappy toolbox to manage this network. And moreover, the toolbox is sort of distributed uh, and depends on the distributed convergence of uh, distributed routing protocols. So what is software-defined networking really trying to do is sort of take that toolbox and make it better. And in some sense, you can think of software-defined networking uh, as, as really having two key ideas. So one is it's, it's what is called sort of the decoupling of the control and the data. So rather than have these distributed routing algorithms control the forwarding behavior of your network, you actually have a centralized program that's actually determining the logic of forwarding. And so, so naturally, that means that you have this sort of central controller that's configuring these individual network elements. So you have this sort of network-wide uh, perspective. And the other thing is actually now uh, the network elements expose nice, open, programmatic APIs to control their routing and forwarding behavior. So now, as a network operator, you can now specify nice, high-level intents of how your routing and forwarding behavior should be. And you can express that as a program written in this controller that gets sort of compiled down or written down into configs for the individual routers. Okay, so that's like the 20 second, 20,000 foot view of SDN. Uh, you'll, you'll hear a lot more about this uh, in the talks to come. The other thing uh, you're probably going to hear a lot about, and I thought I'll give you uh, the 20 second pitch of what that is, is something called uh, network functions virtualization. So this is sort of a parallel technology trend, but increasingly converging with the SDN story. And the idea here is you take what were uh, standalone uh, hardware appliances that you went and bought from thousands of different vendors. Uh, so these were all like sort of your proxy, you have a firewall, you have an IDS, uh, you have like cellular uh, gateway elements and whatnot. And these were all sort of physical hardware boxes that you had to go plug into your network and manage them in some particular way. So instead, what's happening is uh, sort of this trend towards virtualizing these network functions. Uh, where instead of running these uh, hardware boxes that you patch into your network, imagine you could run them as uh, virtual machines that you could spin up on demand uh, wherever you want in the network, and you run them on commodity hardware. So, so what was previously like these hardware uh, elements can now be spun up as 
uh, software modules or virtual machines uh, inside commodity hardware. So again, uh, a lot of the problems you'll hear about uh, are at the intersection of these two uh, domains, SDN and NFV. So this turns out to be a very rich and exciting problem space, uh, sort of SDN, NFV, from a, a, a theory algorithms perspective. And there's a whole bunch of interesting topics that you'll hear about uh, in, this, in this workshop. Uh, so for example, just like some very classical problems like uh, routing and traffic engineering, you can actually now all of a sudden uh, uh, bring really cool ideas uh, to actual practice and uh, deployment in the field because you don't have to worry about the nitty gritties of BGP, OSPF, and all these thousands of protocols uh, that we've pained you with for the last 30 years. Uh, there's interesting problems in network design. Uh, how do you configure tunnels? How do you configure, how do you manage uh, data centers? How do you design uh, data center networks? Uh, there's questions about how do you manage these kinds of advanced network functions? Uh, there's questions about managing uh, forwarding tables. There's interesting problems in like how do you monitor uh, these large scale networks? Uh, there's a lot of interesting problems in correctness and consistency. How do you make sure that, for example, when you do an update of a network, that updates run fast and the updates are correct and provide uh, some nice guarantees uh, to the operator and so on. Again, this is not supposed to be an exhaustive list. You'll see a lot more of these uh, during the talks. But this is sort of just to give you a flavor of sort of uh, the richness of this problem space uh, at this intersection. So with that, let me hand off to Mike. OK. Um, yeah, so I'll be very brief, right? The, the goal of this workshop is kind of to bring all of you together in the same room, right? And uh, uh, you know, some of the theory people here, uh, everyone knows about networking, but maybe aren't expert in SDNs. And I think a lot of the SDN people here maybe don't know exactly what's going on in kind of stock Fox soda algorithms. And so we're going to kind of hopefully bring people together and, and figure out some cool stuff. Uh, so we have these kind of new opportunities and challenges for kind of classical but also new problems. Um, the kind of, uh, there is kind of an open problem session uh, later today, as we'll see, and there's kind of time um, uh, tomorrow. So hopefully, you know, we're going to hear a lot of very interesting talks, but hopefully we're also going to have some time to kind of talk and figure out like what is the important interesting future directions of not just SDN, not just algorithms, but uh, the combination. Right, so we have two days, a mix of short and long talks. And yeah, this, this last one may be a little bit of a lie. There's not quite as much time for discussions as we kind of really wanted, because everyone proposed so many very interesting talks. Um, so instead, maybe just please like ask lots of questions. Let's try to be very involved. Uh, yeah, so at the end, the talks will be posted online. So please send us your slides, video release, and all that. Uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully by the end we'll have a good sense of where we should be going as a field, uh, as two subfields combining uh, for the next couple years. Uh, okay, so with that, I think uh, Tiaga wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, NSF. Oh yeah, so many thanks to Tiaga and Tracy, who probably most people here know, uh, the NSF program managers for the algorithms in the field. The people at Dimax who have been amazing, because both Vyas and I have never organized a workshop before, and the only reason this isn't a total failure is because the Dimax <laughs> people know what they're doing. Um, and uh, CMU, uh, Tony Fox, and thanks everyone for being here. <laughs> Do you have down here? Uh, I don't know. Okay. So uh, uh, I'm Tiaga Nandagopal. I'm a program director at the National Science Foundation. I'm responsible for the networking technologies and systems program, as well as uh, the algorithms in the field program, which is a relatively new program that we started uh, couple, uh, last year. Uh, so Vyas and Michael are among the first cohort of uh, awardees from this program. And it's great to see them take the initiative in uh, you know, organizing this workshop. And uh, I think the fact that all of you are here speaks volumes to the richness of this problem space. And we hope to see much more proposals and interesting uh, ideas emerge from these collaborations that hopefully will happen today and tomorrow. Uh, so I just want to give you a, a high-level overview why, why we did this program. So the, so, yes, the workshop's name is uh, AITF uh, so, uh, Workshop on Software Different Networks. So the algorithms in the field, uh, most of the, uh, the way we see uh, theory of computer science, at least from the NSF uh, perspective, is a lot of very interesting theoretical studies happen, but they happen in isolation without regard to where it's going to be applicable. It's like you're studying theory for the sake of theory, for the beauty of theory. And that's great. It's a noble pursuit. right? But then there's a lot of people who uh, end up taking the theories that the theoretical folks develop and apply them without trying and try to 
shoehorn them in some sense, trying to figure out to the constraints of the situation, even though the theory might have developed without awareness of those constraints. Um, and therefore, there's a suboptimal uh, development uh, that's happening, there's a cycle between theory versus uh, practice. And we all know we hate suboptimality, right? We like optimal, right? And this is our effort, this is NSF's effort to bring optimality to this process, where we want the theoretical folks to work directly with the field people, get their hands dirty, deal with the uneasy realities of life, right? And try to see if there is something interesting that can be, uh, what do you call, realized for the theory, theory folks as well. So they say, this can lead to a new line of theoretical work that nobody has ever thought of. And in return, the field develops from the benefits from receiving the direct wisdom uh, of this, uh, of the great minds can solve any kind of approximation algorithms and bring forth the, the wonders of the world uh, in some sense, to, you know, making things optimal. So that is our, hand, uh, our goal, right? So get your hands dirty, start talking to the field uh, folks, and you know the, the, the bulk of the awards that we awarded last year uh, indicated that. So we had awards go out in uh, scalable machine learning, uh, communi optimizing communication for large databases. Uh, we had uh, graph uh, theory with phylogenetic uh, research. So uh, we did a micro program with microfluidics. Uh, we had, of course, SDNs uh, was a big chunk of the awards as well. So a diverse set of field applications where theoretical computer scientists thought there were some interesting problems that uh, you know that they wanted to tackle. And uh, uh, so the success rate of the program is something that many of you want to know from NSF, how competitive or how hard it is. So the success rate is a very tricky question, so let me give that. So for the field guys, the success rates are much lower. So they have to fight hard. The theory guys have much much easier life in NSF. Okay, so uh, many of the theory folks know the success rates for the theory guys are pretty much around 30, 35 percent. The field guys is around 15 percent. Okay, so again, we wish we could all do theory, but you know, it's a very hard problem, which is why it's still so high. Uh, but for this program, it's in between. It's around 20 percent right now. Okay, uh, it doesn't mean that we should let it be at 20 percent. Uh, one of the things that uh, NSF looks for uh, in terms of continuing new programs. So this is a new program, right? Again, new program with the same amount of money that NSF gets. So money is coming from somewhere, right? They're taking, they're robbing Peter to pay Paul in some sense. But we see this as a critical effort that will serve the communities involved uh, for over the long term. So in order to see this continue, uh, <coughs> if, you know, if you believe there's value in this kind of collaborations, we want more proposals to come in. We want to see a demand from the community saying that we need this and we see great value in further collaborations. So uh, so my uh, appeal to you is you know, if, you know, the, the collaborations that will happen here and you will take forward going forward. You know, we may have other folks within your universities uh, and others you may know of. Start working with them and submit more proposals to algorithms in the field. You know, together, we end up getting much better ideas funded greater collaborations in newer areas uh, and more interesting research problems that will come out as a result. Okay? Now, so that, that's the, uh, my NSF pitch. Okay? Now, uh, in terms of the, is the topic itself, from, from coming from the field side, I'm a field person, so I'm going to talk about the, uh, the A topics that was uh, covered. So SDNs have taken over in the last, I'd say, seven to eight years, right, uh, big time. And while most of the work has been focused on the data center domain, it was very easy to isolate you know, your, your operational network and not worry about interference in, with the rest of the uh, public internet. Now there's a greater interest in making them larger, globally uh, bigger, right? So crossing the domain boundaries. Now, as part of that, uh, many of the carriers, uh, the AT&T uh, and the <coughs> Bell Labs guys here can attest to it, there's a greater interest in taking SDNs to the wireless sites as well, right? Typically, wireless has been a wall garden. You know, you literally had, even though you had a wired network, that wired network didn't talk to the rest of the internet. So there is a greater interest now with the emergence of, so we all have 4G phones. There's a 5G that's coming, cooking up right now in the standards bodies. And one of the things about 5G is that they're trying to bring this whole notion of network function virtualization uh, and software different networks to the wireless uh, backend, uh, to networks, in order to figure out how to scale better how to add new functions really fast, new services really fast. And wireless is one place where optimization plays a huge role. Uh, it is a significant level of optimization that goes on at every level, uh, at the radio level, uh, at the Mac level, at the, uh, at the device level, at the services level, and so on. So it's a rich area for theoretical folks and the SDM <coughs> folks to pay attention to. So 
So doing a discussions, you know, I'm, I'm sure I was looking at the talks. The talks here are pretty uh, applicable to both the wired and the wireless domains. So as you keep discussing these problems and go back to your homegrown institutions, please think of that as well as a potential area where you can innovate. Okay. So that's it. Welcome everyone, and uh, we hope to see some good ideas come up here. Thank you.